This is part two of a deep energy retrofit done by Solaris Architecture. You can find part one in the link below if you haven't watched it already. In this video, Tom shares the results of the Blorador test, some of the air sealing techniques, the installation of insulation, and how much electricity the tenants are using for heating and cooling. I'm Casey Gray, the founder of The Conscious Builder, and on this channel, we help you build and live more consciously. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button and don't forget to check out the links in the description below. We have some exciting news for those people who are looking for Passive House and Net Zero Designs. We recently partnered with Passive Design Solutions and they have completed over 100 Passive House projects in cold climates. They can save you the time and costs for architectural design by selecting one of their ready to build passive house plans. They have house plans ranging in size from 500 square feet to 3,500 square feet, and they offer different orientation options as well. If you're interested, be sure to check out the link in the video description below and take advantage of the Conscious Builder discount. Now, back to the video. This, this is an image showing how we actually changed the performance of the house. So this is just as the house is being completed. It's still under renovation, but all the building envelope is in place. And it was a very cold February night. We had the heating on inside the building and we, we took a, a photo of it, comparing it to its neighbors. And you can just see by the thermal image that this one is, the, ne the neighboring building is just letting out a ton of heat. Whereas the one in our building after renovation is, is really not. And that's, that's the big difference. Interestingly, the building on the other side is exactly the same as our building was before renovation. Same wall assembly, uninsulated walls, same like large boiler, um, you know, replacement windows from the seventies or eighties. So the, it was a perfect test case because we had, we had the, the existing condition was still active right next door. It was really interesting to compare. Uh, our after renovation, we ended up reducing, you know, the air leakage greatly, 97%. Um, the heating load, heating demand um, was like 94% reduction. Ultimately, we calculated that we reduced the, the site energy by 88% and the carbon output by 96% from the old condition. We factor that that's based, that's kind of like taking four and a half Honda Civics off the road permanently, like on a yearly basis. So that, that gets us pretty excited. A big part of this was air change, air, air tightness. So it was at a 9.8 air changes when pressurized, when we first got it. And eventually we drove it down to 0.34 air changes that's actually below the passive house standard. It didn't actually stay at 0.34. Unfortunately, we had like a leak around one of the ERV ducts and it's probably a loose piece of tape and that brought it back up to 0.6 because we actually did one more air, like blower door test at the very end. But at that point, the, that duct was buried behind a bulkhead and you couldn't really get at it. So if I were to do it again, I would have had all the, it's very hard with the phasing to get all the ducts installed and still yet do another, another test because everyone wants to finish off the HVAC after all the drywall is done. We had to use spray foam. So we use spray foam against the, the masonry, the exterior masonry walls because they're load bearing and I'm not comfortable putting bats against those. We used uh, like a, a larger amount of spray foam. We framed the exterior walls in some places with two by threes in fact, instead of two by fours. And, and then in the roof, there's not, there's actually few details in this project because it was all internal. I mean, the fire separations are always a challenge. We took a lot of effort to separate each floor both with a fire separation, but that's also acoustic. So we built up these, these drywall fins that tie into the, the masonry and then they connect to the drywall ceiling. All the floors are, are sound acoustically insulated and the ceilings on resilient channel. We use conventional insulation underneath EPS, underneath the slab. I know some people just go, when, they use, when they're using spray foam, they just do everything in spray foam. Well, I tried to really reduce the use of spray foam. So we didn't use it where we didn't need it, underneath the slab. Also didn't use it in most, in about two thirds of the ceiling. And I'll show you that. So in the, in the portion of the roof that was not flat, 
um, we filled it with cellulose, but it was pretty complicated. So instead of putting, you can see the ceiling below, instead of putting like just a, a poly on the ceiling, I put OSB all across the ceiling to act as the air barrier and the vapor barrier. And, and I taped that and sealed it. And then I built these baffles out of plywood and spray foam up them. And then we could fill like right to the top of that baffle with, with very inexpensive cellulose, still have the venting from the sides and, and have like a more insulation around the edges. And then along the party wall, we insulated the neighbor's party wall too. It's a weird, it's when, when you're doing these downtown Toronto renos, like there isn't one typical condition. There's like four, every edge of the roof has a different condition. One roof, one's a flat roof, one's a pitched roof, one's on your neighbor's party wall. We had to go around and, and insulate all the edges. So you can see now the cellulose just filled that whole thing up. And so here you can see, and then half of the roof is also flat. So we had really no choice but to just spray foam that. I would normally I would normally also insulate above the roof, but in this case the roof had just been replaced and it was actually pretty good. So I left the roof above and and just spray foamed in here. But then where we go to a pitched roof, you can see the OSB in the ceiling, and there's it's all taped off, and that became the air barrier and vapor barrier. We'd also paint it with vapor retardant paint. So it's a really nice solid thing to work up against. You're not you're not trying to like staple plastic up there, and you can really pile the cellulose above it because it can support a lot of weight. We originally had an air barrier spec to roll on to the exterior before we put foam, but when we stripped it out, we found that this is already parged. They they put the originally they put the strapping on and then they parged between it, which I think was a pretty good way to get an air seal at the brick. Cause even back then they knew that bricks are very leaky, you know? So, so they parged it. Uh, and then, so I got the foundation guys to like complete the parging once all the strapping was out. So I think that actually made a really big difference. Just conventional parging, filling in all the gaps. Detail at the time was how to do window bucks. So everything gets tied and wrapped and and, and brought back and then the spray foam can can come out over the and tie right into the blue skin this is a fancy threshold detail in my basement the exterior is out there this is the interior so i built up a wood sill and insulated with foam and wrapped it with all these tapes so you get an air barrier and then the idea is that the, the slab gets cast right against it and you have an insulated thermal break an insulated sill that's uh, also a, a thermal break and so all of this kind of got taped. The, the insulation layer below this one is actually all taped into the into a foam curb that tapes up into the drain board. You can see the air, like the air barrier detail though, is still sticking out above the slab. And so the foam will come down and connect to that. And so there'll be a continuity. Eventually we'll also tape off all of the, the dimple board. You can see how the, like we're, we're using conventional materials like the dimple board, but we're taping it off like crazy with this butyl flash tape, which I love. This is a fantastic tape. What we found in the previous project is when we did a blower door test in the basement, like there was so much air coming in through the dimple board, like through all the little nail holes that it was actually making a very loud whistling sound because once once you block the air from coming in in the walls and around the windows like a conventional home it's going to try and start finding another place to do it so we we realized we had to actually tape off the dimple board all around you can see it all kind of coming in here you can see these ducts it's probably one of these ducts that got loose uh, inside the bulkhead and you know part of the reason we did the extra spray foam is the extra blower door test is I actually had the spray foamers put one layer down first. So they only did two inches and then we did a blower door test and that revealed many, many gaps in the spray foam that I could then highlight and have the spray foamer addressed specially. Cause I didn't want like a, a gap in the first layer to get covered by the second layer. Cause then you'd never be able to stop the, be much harder to stop the, the leak. So you can see that's first pass. You can see it's pretty shallow in the studs. And then we decided to bring in these guys, arrow barrier. We did it um, after the first layer of spray foam before the second. So they set up this, this device that 
mist uh, caulking, tiny little bits of caulking into the air. And that finds, but they pressurize it in it and it pushes it out through the walls and it finds these little cracks and it seals them on its way out. It's really, really pretty cool. And, and then we checked it after them. That was my blower door test and he was really surprised. So it worked out to being uh, like, that's the size of the total air leakage in the building three by three inches in the entire envelope, 10 square inches of a leak area, very low. Glad you tuned in until the end. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notifications when all of our videos are being released. If you wanna see more details about this project, check out the link in the description below. If you wanna see another amazing project, you can check out this video on the deep energy retrofit we did on a 160 year old stone farmhouse. Before the retrofit of this home, the clients kept the home at 15 degrees Celsius during the winter and were heating with oil. They even dropped it down to 10 degrees at night. Now the home is heated with a cold climate heat pump and the clients keep it at a constant 18.5 degrees Celsius and the utility costs were 75% less. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray. Remember to live consciously.